Howdy folks, welcome back to War Thunder. Uh, believe it or not, this is actually War Thunder Ground Forces. Although, you could be forgiven for not realising that at first. This is the Dire Lynx. And he's starting off this tank battle in a BF-109, armed with a 500 pound bomb. Now this isn't something that I've actually shown on the channel before. Because of course, one of the whole attractions of playing War Thunder Ground Forces is that you can have ground and air battles at the same time. And, as I've said countless times before, I don't normally feature other people's War Thunder replays because War Thunder's replay system just doesn't really work for capturing the feeling of what's actually going on during the battle. But I made an exception in this case for three reasons. It's actually pretty easy to figure out what's going on in this fight. And on those occasions where you're not aware of the context of what's happening, the Dialinks actually wrote me a summary of the battle description. And also, it's a great fight. Now, he does miss the target with his first bomb. This is a realistic battle, so it's not easy. I think the good thing about realistic battle replays is that you do still get the target markers that you don't get in simulator battles. Even if you don't get the radar, so you're not really aware of what else is going on around you, there's no mini-map. IL-2 on his tail. Not anymore. More importantly, there's no ticket counter, so thank you to the Dialinks for actually giving me a blow-by-blow -blow account of what was happening when in his description of this battle, because not being able to see the ticket counter is one of those things in the replays that really robs the whole thing of any sense of urgency. He's, yep, shot the IL-2 down, he's in the drink. Who's he going for now? He's doing a flyby. Oh, there we go, an AR-2. There were only six players on each side in this battle. I don't know if he was playing late at night. He's nailed that AR-2 as well, good shooting. I don't know if they were playing late at night or it was just a slow day. Now he's going after the SB-2M. But there were only six players per team, and the enemy team were absolutely kicking ass. They're going evasive there to try to avoid the flak. He uses a spot of terrain masking, he should be safe now. Got some solid rock cover between himself and the AAA guns. He's going after the SB-2M. There he is. But the enemy airbase is not that far from where the tank battle actually takes place here on jungle. So he's gaining a bit of altitude. Obviously the SB-2M has got to lose speed in order to land. They are very fast, very manoeuvrable light bombers. But he has all the advantages here. SBM's coming into land, he's low, he's slow, he has to fly a predictable flight path which gives him all the advantages, he can afford to gain a bit of altitude to set himself up for a diving attack run. SBM's trying to stay as low as possible, oh wow he actually went underneath him. Um, he's done some damage, killed a gunner, but the SBM pilot is able to put it down, so brings it round again. Opens up, kills another gunner, <laughs> um, and again, more critical damage, but he hasn't managed to put him down yet, so he brings it round again. Got all the time in the world to get this right, well, at least until the SBM repairs and rearms. Okay, his cannons are out, he's down to machine guns. He's knocked out one of his engines. But he's still not down. Can afford to take it easy here. The SBM has no gunners left. He's in no danger. Sets up for a nice long strafing run and he takes him out. Okay, now he's practically out of ammunition. But he's got three player kills. So he's going to head back to his own airbase to land, rearm, and repair. Well, not repair, he hasn't taken any damage. Some very, very minor damage from the AAA, but he's out of ammo. 
And more worryingly, and something that you can't tell from the replay, but in the battle description that the Dire Lynx wrote for me, at this point, when he's heading back to base, he notices nobody on his team has a single ground kill. He only has two tanks left on his team. All of the enemy players are still in their original starting tanks, and his team only has half of their ticket counter left. So, you know, the situation's pretty bad. He uses up the rest of his machine gun ammunition on some anti-aircraft guns on the way back to base. Now, to put things in context for you, what was actually going on at this point was that the enemy team weren't actually going for the cap. They had just been running around slaughtering friendly players in their tanks. Dialynx's team actually had the cap at this point. But with only two tanks on the ground, it was going to be a problem trying to hold on to the cap. Because at precisely this point, this is when the enemy team realised, hang on a minute, we're killing all of these tanks, but we're actually losing. Ah, maybe we'd better go and cap the flag. So, while Dialynx is returning to base in his BF-109, all six enemy tanks are rushing the flag. And things are getting pretty critical. He manages to land without breaking anything. Clearly he has no idea how to land an aircraft properly. <laughs> He's not a disciple of the noble art of the jingles landing. His propellers are still working. Friendly JU-87 coming in behind him as well. These guys need to get out of their planes and get into some tanks. You can lose a war because you don't have air superiority, but you can never win a war unless you've got boots on the ground, or in this case, tanks. So, he spawns into a Panzer IV and immediately has to start defending himself from enemy tanks that are running around looking for a fresh tanks to kill. There are only three players left on his team at this point. And the one good thing about the situation is that because these enemy tanks were running around looking for things to shoot at, not many of them were actually in the cap circle. Now, before we all get too judgmental about people ignoring the flag and going after kills, remember, killing tanks also depletes the enemy team's ticket counter. But the situation that we have right now is that there are still six enemy players driving around in their tanks, and there are only three players left, including Dialynx, on his team. Which is kind of good, because it means there are less players for the enemy team to kill in order to drive the ticket counter down. And the most efficient way for the enemy team to win at this point is to go for the flag, and a couple of the enemy players are doing exactly that. Even though you can't tell, because it's a replay, and there's very limited UI available in a replay, but both teams are very, very low on tickets. And the next couple of kills, and the next few minutes of flag possession, are going to be critical. Now, there are some friendly AI tanks up ahead. And you, you can use the AI to tell you where the enemy is, even if you can't see them, because they're shooting at something. So there are obviously enemy tanks up in that direction. Stops, takes a look, can't see anything. Oh, he's putting fire in on something. Oh, he's killed a landing craft. <laughs> well, okay. Got nothing better to shoot at, but he's got to get his ass up. And even a landing craft is a target, it all goes towards running down the enemy's ticket counter. But, well, you know, shooting at AI is all well and good, and if you've got nothing better to shoot at, then by all means, take pot shots at the AI, but he needs to kill players, and more importantly, he needs to get into that cap circle and stop the enemy team from running his ticket counter down. In a moment, he does something that had me a little confused for a second. He's about to call in a fire mission, and I, I couldn't see any enemy tanks. I thought that perhaps he was calling in a preemptive fire mission on the cap. But what he's actually done is um, he's about to take out the enemy cruiser <laughs> with an artillery barrage. And there it goes. And <laughs> hey, kills a kill. So here he comes, the cap circle, the moment of truth. 
what was actually happening here, and the reason why he didn't call down an artillery barrage on the cap circle, was that there were actually no enemy tanks in it. They were still driving around looking for the last three tanks to kill. So he's now running down the enemy ticket counter, and they're not going to sit around and just do nothing about it. Now that they know, if they're paying attention, somebody is sitting in the cap, they're going to have to react to it. He's scanning around looking for approaching enemy tanks, but he can't see anything. And then suddenly something obviously just popped up on his radar, and there it is. BT-7. He puts one shot in. BT-7 returns fire, bounces, and then he gets amaracked by a sneaky T-50. Didn't even see where that came from. Seconds out, round two. He's got one respawn left in this Panzer IV. He's got to get back up to the cap circle. Right now, that T-50 has actually started to pay attention to what's going on. And he's now occupying the cap circle. I don't know exactly where the other two friendly tanks were at this point. Fortunately, it's a replay. There's no map. But they weren't doing an awful lot useful. Still six enemy players left. None of them have died more than once. They're all still in the game. Heads back up to the cap circle. The flag is in possession of the enemy team at this point. You can see he isn't hanging around. He's motoring all the way up there. And there's that BT-7. His first shot sets him on fire. Doesn't finish him off though, he's still engaging, well I'm not entirely sure what he's shooting at, it looks like AI, his second shot kills him. He's got to get into that cap circle, there is at least one enemy tank sitting in there, running the ticket counter down. He stops, calls in a fire mission, advances as fast as he can through the water, he's got to get up there. The next minute of this game is going to be critical. Artillery barrage lands on target. It seems to have fallen a little short. There is at least one enemy tank up that hill. Come on. Get up there. T-50. Oh, that's bad news. Scores a hit. Doesn't appear to do anything. Takes a hit in return. Takes another hit, cannon breach damaged, his turret's jammed, he hits the T-50 again, he doesn't really seem to care, the T-50 kills him for a second time. Now he's got no tanks left, the T-50 is sitting in the flag, his team only has 150 tickets left. The two tanks on his team are moving towards the cap, but they're miles away, they are never going to make it in time. Which, if you look on the bright side, means that they're in no danger of dying anytime soon. All the enemy team has to do now is kill one more tank, and that's enough ticket loss for them to win the game. He's never going to get there in time in a tank. So he jumps into his BF-109 again. He hammers the throttle open, races back to the flag. Two tanks left on his team, nowhere near the cap circle. It's all down to him. He's only going to get one shot at this. There are seconds of the game left before the enemy team win by flag capture. He only has to kill one tank, and he doesn't miss. <laughs> what a shot. That was fantastic. And that is, um, is how the Dire Lynx practically single-handedly won a combined arms air and ground battle on the jungle map in Realistic Battle in War Thunder. If you want a job done properly, you've got to do it yourself. And his team really were hopeless. He scored four player tank kills, three player aircraft kills, two AI kills, more than the rest of his team combined. What a performance. 
So, one of those very, very rare occasions where I'll upload a War Thunder replay that isn't one of my own games, because the Dial Links, well, one, played a fantastic match, two, was relatively easy to tell what was going on, and when it wasn't easy to tell what was going on, he wrote a fantastic description, blow-by-blow -blow account of what happened exactly when and why during the course of the battle. So thank you so much, The Dire Links, for sending that one in. Take care, folks, and I'll catch you next time.